Hello, what's up YouTube photographer Ronix with another tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can easily get and replicate that realistic skin texture in your images in Photoshop. So look at this image and I show you what I'm trying to mean. You can see some areas in this image don't have texture in them. So if at all you want to create that texture in Photoshop, this is a tutorial for you. And before you proceed, I have a request that you hit the like button on this video because when you press or hit that like button as you're watching the video, it helps you not to forget after learning from this channel and also helps YouTube to recommend this video or this tutorial to many photographers or retouchers out there who may be needing to fix the same issue when it comes to creating realistic skin textures within Photoshop. So make it a point that you hit, hit the like button. So right now, this is the image that we have and we want to create that texture. And what we have to do first, we're just going to come to the new layer icon and simply create a new layer. And we're going to name this into texture. And when we do this, we're just going to press enter. And after that, we just want to fill this layer with 50% gray. So just come to edit, then you come to fill. And when you come to fill, it is going to bring up the fill dialog box. So make sure you select 50% gray right here. And make sure you leave the blend mode in normal and opacity at 100%. Then also make sure that pre preserve transparency is not checked right here. And come and simply press OK. So after doing this, remember the layer has really made the image disappear. So we want to get back our image. The way it was looking before and the blend mode that is going to help us reveal or get back our, our image is going to be the overlay blend mode so just come and select overlay and you're going to get back the image the way it was meant to be so right now in photoshop if at all we want to or we are not sure of the results that we may want to achieve after making adjustments on the image we have what we term as a smart object or a smart filter. By smart object, I mean when you create this layer and you make adjustments on it after making it as a smart object, you can switch back or go backwards and change those values that you apply to a layer. Unless or unlike when we try using it without turning it into a smart object or a smart filter. So in order to do that, we're just going to come and we select the texture layer right click on it and simply come to convert to smart object and that is going to apply this icon which is going to create an icon on this texture adjustment layer so right now we just want to recreate that skin texture by just coming to filter and we're going to come to our camera row filter so this is where the creation of the textures is going to take place so with this gray layer, we're just going to come to our effects in our camera filter. So just come to effects and you can see that we have the option that says grain. So grain usually depends on how close or how far or how intense you want the textures to be in your image. So for our case, our image was a little bit losing out on so much of the textures. So we're just going to come and click on that grain and put grain within the image and when i zoom in you can see that we have grain that has been created for us so i'm just going to take this a little bit up then for the size usually this is how close or how far you want uh, the grain to be so you can see when i take the size up and when i take it down you can see the size is really smaller and taking it up is going to really make uh, the size a little bit bigger so i'm just going to use a size of around 41 because our image is a relatively close image then for the roughness is how smooth or how rough you want your grain to be you can see as we take it up it's going to make the grain a little bit on the softer side so usually i'm just going to take the roughness down as i'm looking at uh, my grain so you have to keep on zooming in and out to look at uh, the amount of grain that you have 
So I'm just going to take this up a little bit so that it can look a little bit realistic. And when I feel like that is okay for me. So for the details that I've used, my grain is around 75. Then uh, my size is around 41 and the roughness is 20. So in Photoshop, remember, we are working on a smart object. So if at all we feel like these values are not okay for us and they are not working well with the image, since we created a smart object, we can come back and start on these values and play around with them later on. So I'm just going to come and simply press OK. And that is going to add green to the image. So if at all I am to zoom in, you can see that our image has green, but this doesn't look natural at all. So the next thing that we're just going to do, we're just going to come to filter. And you're going to come right here down to stylize and just come to emboss. So when you come to emboss, you're going to get another window or another dialog box that is containing the emboss. And make sure the preview window is turned on in this case. So right now what we want to do, we have to look at the angle or take into consideration the angle from which the image was shot. So for this case, you can see these highlights are depicting that the light was coming from the top left hand corner so you have to take that into consideration so you have to move this to the direction where your light so this point has to point where your light was coming from so that the texture can look a little bit natural and a little bit more realistic so at around this point that looks okay so after doing this, the next thing that we are going to handle or take into consideration is the height. So height is more of how far we want our textures to be or space. So you can see as I'm taking this up, it is going to really affect the amount of textures within the image. So you can take this up. So I'm just going to take this up, up to when I feel like I have... A texture that looks a little bit more natural and reasonable for me so i'm just going to take this higher as i'm looking at the image so take this a little bit up so at around around 88 that is when i feel like i'm having a better skin texture for my image then and under amount you can see when you check the amount slider down it reduces on the intensity of the textures so you have to take this up as you're looking at your image and it depends or this is going to vary or depend on how close or how far your image is. So mine is a portrait. So I'm just going to take this a little bit up to around 110. So remember, um, I keep on zooming in and out to look at my image. So right now the textures have been applied, but this doesn't look nice at all. So I'm just going to come and simply press OK. So don't mind about the values because right now if at all you feel like you want to change or alter the values, you can just double click on any adjustment that you want to change and you can change it right here by double clicking, for example, on the emboss and it's going to open that and you can change from where you stopped. So just come and press OK. So right now what we want to do, this doesn't look nice or natural at all i hope you can see this the textures don't look natural and they don't look very great at all so for this case what i'm going to do basically i'm just going to come to filter and i'm going to come to blur and apply a gaussian blur filter so by this you just come and take the radius all the way down so i'm just going to come and start taking the radius up up to when i feel like uh, the textures are a little bit on the realistic side so around 0 0.3 that looks okay to me so this looks okay it looks natural remember we, we're just going to paint in our textures in the image so i'm just going to come and press or click on okay so right now the textures have been applied even in the hair and we don't want some areas to have more skin textures than the others in this photo so what we're going to do we're just going to create a layer mask by simply pressing on this layer mask icon with the texture layer selected just like that and that is going to create a layer mask 
and after that you're just going to come and make sure the layer mask is selected and simply press Ctrl or command i on the keyboard and that is going to hide the textures from affecting the overall image so just come to the brushes and simply right click and get the brush tool and make sure the hardness is at zero meaning the brush is going to be soft and opacity at 100 the the mode is normal the flow is 100 percent and make sure you have white on top and if at all you don't have black and white here ensure that you click on these two small boxes right here or you can switch between black and white by using x on the keyboard and that is going to switch between black and white so make sure white is on top then you can come and paint in the textures that you want in specific areas remember initially the textures were all over the image so in order to paint in the textures that we want in those areas with the brush tool just come and make sure you have white on top and come and paint in the textures in those areas that you don't want or you want to be affected by those textures and you can see these are a little bit realistic so you can come and add textures on the nose area this area was lacking texture you can just come and paint in those textures depending on how intense you want the textures to be or in those areas that you want to have that nice and rich skin texture so i'm just going to come and paint in those textures in those areas and you can see these look more natural and when you feel like it is a little bit more on the artificial side what you have to come and do is revisiting our adjustments right here so you can come and revisit the adjustments and when you feel like it is a little bit rough you can either come to your Gaussian blur and simply double click and it's going to get us back to the Gaussian blur radius and simply blur out or reduce on the intensity of those textures to the one of our liking and come back and press ok that is the advantage of using a smart object and let's look at a quick before and after for our texture layer or for our textures in this very image so this was the image before after before after hope you can see that we have tried to recreate these textures within photoshop so this is all for today's tutorial and if at all you found this video helpful make it a point that you hit the like button on this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you're watching and you're not subscribed to this channel ronix for monis photography thank you for watching and i'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating